Hey guys, Justin here with JHeart Modelworks, coming to you with another update on the Revell Monogram 125th scale 37 Ford pickup. So the interior tub is done, and that has been a huge holdup for the rest of the build. Now that the interior tub is done, we can get that pushed up into the cab, we can get the cab on the rest of the chassis, and get the chassis on the frame. That will allow us to finish up the engine bay detail, and get our wheels going, things of that nature. All that's going to go really quick now that we're done with the interior. And that's all going to be in another update though because I want to go ahead and focus on the interior because there's a lot of really nice detail and it is going to disappear once we get the, the interior pushed up into that cab. It's a little dark in there. So let's go ahead and get this camera turned around and look at what we got. Hey guys, it is Monday the 19th of February. It's President's Day and surprisingly I'm off. I also had a really bad bout of insomnia last night and could not sleep at all. So I've been working a bit on the truck last night and I got quite a bit done. And I wanted to just capture this real quick before I finish putting the interior together as a lot of this is going to disappear. But I may as well go ahead and start over here on the chassis first which as you will see, I've got the bed assembled here. Our fenders are on. Our tailgate's functional. We didn't break that surprisingly. Our fire extinguisher is in place right there in its little bracket. As you can see, I have made rope. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I did it, but I just, just thought that would be cool and just kind of tossed it in there on top of the fire extinguisher. It's not actually glued down. It's literally just sitting in there. Now what I used to do this with is some of my wife's cross-stitching uh, floss is what they call it. I call it thread, but uh, I, you know, I, I don't cross-stitch. This is DMC number 3828. It actually comes in these long loops. My wife puts it on these little spindles. It's easier for her to manage. You could honestly probably get away with just doing it just like that and calling that good. Now there's six separate strands in here. So what I did was I split them into two sets of three and then using a technique I saw in a survival video, like I'm ever going to be out in the wilderness needing survival, um, I actually hand wound my rope to get a more rope-like texture to it, in my opinion. So that is kind of cool. If you let me know, and if you want, I'll actually do it. Uh, tips and tricks video on how to wind this and how to split this up and turn it into the two separate strands and then the directions and how to wind it and wrap it to get that rope effect but that's where we're at with that we do have a hole drilled back here where our uh, that's where the gas cap goes it comes out and comes up so that's got a metal pin in it right now and that is ready to go in there The cab has our glass in place. We have our window trims done. Rear glass is in. We have our dome light installed in here. I've done everything inside with the metallic gray from Tamiya. So I threw in just a little bit of Bob Smith Super Gold Plus on the sides to kind of tack it in place. Then I ran back over here with some matte finish Mod Podge so that that would seep underneath there and help glue that into place a lot better. And then I just went back over it with, I brush painted some of the Tamiya Metallic Gray in over top of it. Um, you can kind of see in there where that glue is, but once you actually have it like in, if you're trying to actually look in it, you're not really going to see that enough to actually notice it. So I'm not going to try and like sand and repaint and all that. I'm just going to leave that 
quite like that. So that is about ready to have door handles on and the interior tub shoved into place. I want to get the door, I, I don't really want to put the door handles on until I'm ready to put it on the chassis. And I do want to put the door handles on before I put the interior tub in. The interior tub should, when it slides in, kind of curve in and drop in right over those. And I want to be able to glue them from the inside so that there's no glue getting all over my paint. So we will see how that goes here in a bit. The interior. We've done the seats in some Zero Paints Saddle Tan. It's over the black, so it's a little darker than it would have been if it was over the gray, but that's okay. I then went back over it with the Tamiya Dark Brown Panel Liner. So that kind of darkened in all the recesses in there. Gives it a little bit more accent. Joe from Mad Genius sent me a video on some chipping techniques and some weathering which looked really cool, but I had already had the door handles and the window cranks in place. So I couldn't go back in there and do it. Maybe on the next one though, thank you very much, Joe. And we have our window cranks and our door handles in place. I did get a little messy on that one. I might try to come back in and clean that one up a little bit. I uh, dry brushed some Vallejo Silver over all these little bolts on the sides. So those kind of picked up a little bit as well. Those door handles look really cool in there. Uh, we have our pedals done. The clutch and the brake pedal are a pain in the butt, guys. There's no positive locating for them. They're just kind of a butt fit. So you've got to put some CA glue on there and then just hold them into place one at a time and hope that you get them straight and that they actually hold. If I were to do this again, I would probably go in and try to drill them out and put just a half millimeter metal pin in here and then drill out the floor pan so that you have a little more positive locating in there. But we did get them to work and they look pretty good. They're fairly straight. You're not really gonna see them once it's actually in the cab anyhow. We have our gear shift done, and I went ahead and did some burl wood patterning on that as well. Figured that would help match in with the steering wheel that we did. So that is looking good. Speaking of the steering wheel, the steering column is completely done. Now there is a small post that sticks up where the original steering wheel should mount. And this banjo steering wheel that I 3D printed is pretty flat and shallow. So I created kind of just a little transition piece here that I have a hole in to mount onto the steering column. And there's just kind of a flat in there that the it's just like a small little flat nub that the steering wheel itself can glue on top of and stay secure. So that looks pretty good. I also went in and I did drill it. I used a 0.3, no, it was a 0.4 millimeter drill bit to get the hole for this tiny little insect pin. This is a number one insect pin, so it's about 0.3 millimeters. Little CA glue little brown and some clear orange to give the knob just kind of the wood look again to tie it in with the steering wheel I think that's gonna look great that is going to bring us to the dashboard the dashboard looks really good I'm very happy with the dashboard I have one of my 3d printed ignition switches in here so I just kind of drilled a half millimeter hole and slid that puppy in there. Put a little wash in it to get a little accent on the keyhole. We have our handle in place, our T-handle for the front vent. That looks good. I kind of went back over and hit all these buttons again. 
with the Displace Over Marker. If I touch these, I rub them off. I don't know if it's just because of the clear coat or if there's something in my skin. I don't know. These acrylic markers do not like me. But I have had to go over and touch these in like three or four times now. So I want to get this in soon. And we have our gauges. And I like the way those gauges turned out. So these are the kit decals and they want you to basically cut this whole thing out and just glue this thing into the back of the dashboard and like that. This decal sheet is badly yellowed. The decals themselves may have been okay, but I went ahead and designed my own based off of some actual gauges that I saw online on an aftermarket parts shop for these old Fords. And these are an actual set of gauges that would have been in a 37 to 40 something, I believe, pickup truck. And I liked those a bit better. So I just printed these out on some photo paper, cut it out, and instead of gluing it directly, into the back. I glued it onto a sheet of thin acetate first, just some clear acetate, and that gives us the appearance of lenses. Well, actually, it creates lenses. It's not the appearance of. These are actual lenses over the gauges. Now, a lot of guys will put in like some clear or some Mod Podge. I've done it too, even UV, like UV uh, Bondic. I find the Bondic yellows over time. And as far as using clear, it tends to dome up, which creates a lot of distortion in your decal and it doesn't quite look right. So doing it this way, we get the look of that lens without that bubble dome look in it. I've also had actual bubbles form in the clear and that caused problems where you couldn't even see the decal because of the bubbles. So using the sheet acetate over the decal like this works a lot better for me. So that needs to drop in. I'm trying to be kind of careful. That needs to drop in just like that. In fact, that dashboard's ready to go, so let's go ahead and do that. This way I won't have to worry about it getting bumped around and that T-handle getting broken off. No, I don't have to worry about any of that getting hit, that T-handle getting knocked off and broken. That should be nice and safe in there. I had to do a bit of quick modifying there. All oh, heck kind of broke loose as my turn signal stock was a little too long. But we've got everything installed in there. It looks pretty good. I did make kind of a mess of the steering column right there. But that's going to be hidden. No one's going to see that. So all in all, I am pretty okay with where we're at. Uh, we still need to get the firewall in place. The firewall has had nothing done to it yet. Um, I do need to finish off the battery and then we can get that wrapped up. Now for the battery, we need decals. So we go back to this decal sheet isn't great. And there's nothing really on here I wanted to use. So I went ahead and I made up my own decal sheet like I usually do with my license plates. I have done two different sets of registration stickers, one for February in case I finish it this month, one for March in case I do not. We have our Optima battery logos in here, a down to scale logo. I am a member of the down to scale model car group. And it's kind of like a little registration plate. Um, and some of that plate over there. There should be a plate right here up in this corner and there's not one on the model so I'm going to put one right there. I may put the down to scale logo on a piece of aluminum and just drop that over that hole there that I should have fixed but I did not 
and I'm just not willing to strip this because I don't have the paint to strip it. So we're just going to cover that up. But like I said, nothing's really been done here yet. We got plans though. Um, we have also stripped almost all of our chrome stuff. I thought I had all the chrome stuff. <clears throat> I thought I had all of our chrome parts stripped and it's all been painted up with some Duraluminum Tough Chrome. I love this chrome, this is a really nice chrome. The shinier your black is, the better. However, uh, it's fairly resilient to touching. It's not perfect, I can still rub it off. I guess my skin is acidic or something. So I do hit it with some Alclad Aqua Gloss, which dulls it down just a little, but really not that much, if, to be honest. That's a really good looking chrome. And we've got our, I went ahead with just some bright silver inside the headlight lamps, but we've got our chrome on the outside and that's gonna look good and it's gonna look pretty good for scale too. It's not like super chromey like the kit chrome where it looks fake. I did go ahead and pre-assemble, after I stripped everything off, I went ahead and pre-assembled the mounts, which makes it easier to hold when you're trying to paint the, the chrome on the bumpers. It also means you don't end up having to fight with the chrome when you're trying to glue everything together later. These are already glued together with some Tamiya Extra Thin back when it was bare plastic. Normally I strip with bleach, but Honestly, there's a clear underneath most kit chromes that they use as a base to hold the, the chrome plating on. And the clear under this was not yellow. It was brown. It was bad. So I threw it in a baggie with some Easy Off Oven Cleaner, which not only gets the chrome off, but it also gets rid of the clear that's underneath it. Got it down to clear plastic and assembled up all the bumpers. When I went to go ahead and record this, I then found the grill and I had not stripped it yet. So that's being stripped right now. So it'll get painted up to match up with all of this. So that's gonna be a wrap for this video. Our next step is gonna be to finish off this firewall so we can get that mounted in here and we can get this inside the cab. Once we get this inside the cab, we can go ahead and get the cab dropped onto the chassis get the chassis dropped onto the frame and then we are literally just looking at odds and ends around the outside so thanks for hanging out with me guys i always appreciate you watching the videos and i will catch you on the next one